All right, so um, I'm going to start by reviewing a little bit from last time, um, and then I'll tell you when you need to start writing, okay? So I'm going to put on present my entire screen. Okay, so... All right, so we talked about last time how the word Holocaust, um, we use it for what the Nazis did to the Jews, but it's really something that, a term that you could apply to lots of things. Um, so Holocaust means destruction or slaughter on a massive scale. We talked about what genocide is and genocides when you try to kill a specific group of people. And we have talked about how the Holocaust isn't just the, um, the only genocide that's ever happened, but we've had plenty of genocides um, around the world in the past century. We talked about how 6 million people died as a result of the Holocaust, um, most of them in the Pol Polish or Soviet, which is Russian area, um, but it was really all throughout Europe. And it wasn't just Jews, it was actually quite a few different groups of people that were targeted by the Nazis as um, part of the Holocaust. Um, we talked about the big rallies that Hitler would have and how he did the Nuremberg Laws. And the, the big idea behind these two laws was Jews were excluded from citizenship and they weren't allowed to marry Germans. Only You were only allowed to marry Jews. We talked about um, how they had different ways to classify if you were Jewish or if you were um, German or if you were mixed. And we talked about the Berlin Olympics with uh, Jesse Owens winning and Hitler refusing to recognize him. We talked about how there were laws that said that Jews couldn't um, do the same things as non-Jewish people. So um, they weren't allowed to go to certain stores, go to parks. They couldn't sit on benches. And then we went into Kristallnacht, which is when a lot of the German Jews shops and synagogues were destroyed and people were sent to concentration camps for the first time. Um, as Lily said, when her sister was in the um, Anne Frank uh, play, they had to wear Stars of David to show that they were Jewish on their clothes. Miss Ballard, are we mm -hmm. gonna learn about the Bloods Creek today? Uh, next, uh, that's tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. We're going to finish this off. And then we talked about how they use propaganda posters to show that Jews, uh, the Nazis used propaganda posters to convince people that Jews were evil people that were bent on destroying Germany. Okay. You don't need to write this down, but this is where we stop. This is our new section. So because the Germans wanted to get rid of the Jews, originally what they did is they, they tried to convince them to go somewhere else. So please immigrate, please emigrate to um, the United States, to the UK. We don't want you in Germany. Um, but as the war progressed, um, Hitler felt like this wasn't good enough. So we see mobile killing squads where people would line um, the Jews up and they would kill them. Um, as you might expect, this was found to be very depressing for the people who had to kill all the Jews. Um, and the, the German um, army was concerned that their soldiers were getting depressed. So um, they came up with what was called the final solution. So you need to write this on your left side and this is on your right. So the final solution, the idea behind that is it was the, the, the ultimate way to rid the world of Jews. So instead of having these killing squads that would drive around and kill Jews and line them up, they were going to systematically um, and purposefully design places that could be mass execution centers that could kill Jews and anyone else they didn't like. So the final solution was to increase the speed and ease of mass murdering Jews and other undesirable people. Hitler and his ministers, his helpers, came up with what was called the final solution. So the final solution is the plan that outlined the idea of having extermination camps and sending people to these extermination camps like Auschwitz to be gassed. If there are any questions on that? That's a really important part to understand. Would they only be gassed or were there more ways? Something That's a good question. So if they were purposefully killing you, um, most of them were gassed. Um, the other people who were not gassed usually went to work camps and they would die 
of starvation um, or just poor conditions. How would they do, how would they like, would they put them into like a room to, to just like? That's a great question, Isabel. We're gonna do that part next. Okay. Ms. Uh huh. Um, I wasn't here when you started. Uh huh. Um, I was. I accidentally realized that I was here seven minutes late. I have no so idea. Chris, Audrey, we started by reviewing. So this is the first thing you're writing down. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did everybody get a chance to write this? No. Okay. So when we think of the Holocaust and the people in the camps, that part of the Holocaust is what we would call the final solution. But the Holocaust itself started with, um, you could say the Nuremberg Laws or Crystal Knots, like even before the war. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move on. Okay, so with the final solution, there's really two kinds of camps that are built. And the Jews from across Europe, that the land that is controlled by the Germans, are sent on trains to these camps. Um, they're generally told, hey, we need to send you somewhere that you're not around other Germans or other not Jewish people. So we're going to send you, you know, to a holiday camp or a rest camp or um, somewhere else in Europe so that you're away from other people. Um, they didn't tell them, it would be stupid to tell them that they're sending them to a place to die because then they would just run away. Um, Miss so, mm -hmm. my parents went to the, the one that's in the far left corner, um, the far left bottom corner. What was Dachau? the one that I went to? Did they go to Dachau? That one, right? Dachau? Or whatever. Dachau. Yeah, yeah that's we the went one to Dachau. Went to. That, that is a really interesting camp stage because that was actually a, a camp before the war where they would send the political prisoners who didn't agree with Hitler. Really? That's right outside Munich, isn't it? Um, isn't it by Munich? Yes, that's when we went. Mm -hmm. that's we, awesome. When we were in Munich, we went over, um, I think by train. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's really close. My mom went there too. I, I've actually not been to a camp before. so um, yeah, I'm trying to look and see if we were right there are we supposed to write yeah. this down yeah no you don't need to write them down oh miss bard uh -huh. you know the one like to the very 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 left like uh -huh. not in germany yeah how do you pronounce that Vucht? I okay think yeah. in, didn't that um in, like holland i think that's the netherlands yeah didn't um I uh, Corey ten boom go there yeah i didn't know how to that was, pronounce that either that was really the chapter, right that would make yeah. sense because it's in Holland. So yeah. the green ones, guys, are the concentration camps. So these would be the camps where you would, like the work camps. This wasn't a, a purposeful killing camp. A lot of people here would just die because the conditions were so bad. The that ones in red, these are the death camps where you specifically were sent there to be exterminated. In Poland? In Poland. Okay, yeah. so... Part of that is think about it, okay? Hitler is in charge because people believe in him. If the average German knows that there are specific camps to murder these people, then they're not going to keep following him. So he hides them in Poland. So oh. almost all the death camps are in Poland. So but then why, it, he, Poland. why would the Polish people tell them? Who? The Polish people like tell the other people. Uh, so we're, we're kind of filtered out, but there was no pictures of this. There, this is before, you know, any sort of social media or internet. So unless there's secret pictures, the Nazis aren't going to let it be po pick, um, posted in um, newspapers. And the Poles are the enemies of the Germans. They don't really want to talk to the Germans. Okay. So okay. Good, good connection to Tori Pen Tenboom. Good job. Do the Polish people know that there are the death camps there? Yeah, they did. Oh. Um uh, I don't know how much they knew. Um, a lot of this was still kept secret, but they would have had much more um, knowledge that it was there. Okay. Okay. All right. So on the left, we're writing Auschwitz. And on the right is um, what it is. And this was the most famous death camp. 
It was called Auschwitz and it was in Poland. So this was considered to be the worst place to be sent. And um, you can see the famous sign, Arbeit macht frei, which is a taunt um, because the Jews would walk in through this gate and the gate says, if you work, you get to be free. But that's of course not what happened. So the Jew, the Germans are taunting the Jews. On the right hand side, this shows the train tracks. So the trains would, um, would bring the people in. Oh, sorry. They would bring the people in and this would be what you would see. But why would this one be any worse than the others? Um, I think it had a higher killing rate, Lily. It was really, really fast with how fast it could kill people. Oh, okay. The whole purpose is to kill people as quickly as possible for the Germans. And this is so important to the Germans that even when the Germans are losing the war desperately against the Russians later on, the Germans, instead of sending tr um, supplies and troops to Russia on the trains, they're still using trains to send Jews to be killed. So they only have so many trains and they thought it was more important to send people to be killed than to help their troops defeat the Russians. So it, it shows how warped their, their thinking is. All right, everybody good? Do you think that if the um, Nazis would have sent the supplies to the um, troops, do you think they could have beaten Russia? I don't know if they could have beaten them, but it definitely would have helped them um, fight the Russians off for longer. It's a good question. Miss Ballard. Uh huh. What does Auschwitz? Um, what does that translate to? Um, I think it's the name of like the town that's nearby. Miss Ballard. Uh, that's a good question. So it's actually called. If you look back here, it's listed as Auschwitz Beer Canal. There's actually two camps right next to each other that were part of one. Um, like one compound. Miss Ballard. Uh huh. Um, can I tell you what kind of makes me feel bad whenever we like learn about this stuff? Sure. Like I'm, like I'm German. Like I'm part German, mm -hmm. but I like I wasn't in Germany at this time. My none of my relatives were. We had already moved to the United States, mm -hmm. but um, it was just it just kind of makes me really feel bad. Mm hmm. It's like, we did this. It's not a good thing. I agree, Audrey. I have German relatives, too. I have friends that live in Germany. And I think that we have to remember is, yes, it was in Nazi Germany this happened. But I think this just, just shows how dark people's souls can be. Like, I think it shows how broken the world is. And this, I mean, we saw the picture of genocide. Genocide can happen anywhere. Um and even like Americans, like we didn't treat the Indians very well in our own country. Um, no. We didn't necessarily go and kill them off, but like it was death camps, but we definitely didn't treat them as well as we could have. So, um, Miss Ballard, are we going to do like the question and comment thing? Um, it's really hard for me to see that. So as long as you're not talking over me, you can ask me anything you want or just comment. Okay. okay. Ms. Ballard, I have a question. Uh huh. In Hogan Heroes, is that why they would like joke about going to the Russian front because there were any supplies over there? My heart just, it's so happy that you asked about Hogan's Heroes, my favorite TV show. Um, yes, that's what all the jokes are about the Russian front because all the Germans go there and they're slaughtered. Like the German army did terrible against the Russians uh, in the second half of the war. Yeah, so that's why everybody's always afraid to get sent there. And there, the Russians would do really, really nasty things to the German soldiers. Um, okay, so let's talk about what would be the experience of a person arriving at Auschwitz. So you don't need to write anything, you just need to listen. Um, so the main thing is you would arrive by train and a lot of people actually died on the train. They didn't even make it to Auschwitz. Um, you would be mostly in a cattle car. So think about the kind of cars you would use to transport livestock in. So horses, cows, pigs. Um, when we went on a train, there were those nice comfy seats. There were those big windows. There was a bathroom in the back. Uh, you could potentially be on this train for several days and um, there would only be a bucket of water in the corner and a bucket for everybody to go to the bathroom in. And there wasn't enough room for everybody to lay down or to sit down. So you'd have to take turns in the car. Also, after that bucket fills up for the, the PP. Um, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have to figure out a way to get rid of that. Um, 
and it's going to smell really bad and people might be getting sick and people aren't wearing deodorant. And a lot of times it was summer and it's hot and there's no windows. Um, so a lot of people actually died before they even made it to the concentration camp. And what's really scary is they wouldn't even take the bodies out of the, the cattle cars until they got to Auschwitz. So you'd be in the cattle car um, with the dead body potentially for a couple days. Um, if mm -hmm. people are sick, wouldn't they take them to like the hospital or like if they were sick? So no, um, because the whole purpose is to kill people at Auschwitz. If you die on the way, it's one less person they have to kill. Okay. Um, and then didn't in the rooms, like they didn't like, they pretty much, oh wait, never mind. Okay. Yeah. I, th I think I know what you're going to ask. We're going to get to that next. Um, so once you got there, they would form you in two lines. Um, so at Auschwitz, the Germans were very, very orderly people. And why should they pay for, pay for people to work there when they can make the Jews work there? Um, so a lot of the labor that was done with killing people was actually done by the Jews being forced to, um, being forced to work in the camp. So they would have one, one line would be for people that they thought were healthy and strong and could work. And then the other line was the people right away who were going to be sent to the gas chambers. Um, of course, people didn't know it at the time. Um, and it was very, very frightening experience because often you'd be, you'd been in this, this car for several days, this um, train car, they would pull open the, the door and there would be barking, growling, dogs that are biting you and guards yelling at you in German. Um, a lot of people were not German Jews. They might only speak Polish or Yiddish or Hungarian. So you're trying to figure out what's going on and they're pulling families apart. So it's really a heart wrenching um, moment. Uh, as soon as you get there, it's very disorienting and you don't know what's happening. You thought you were going to a seaside resort and here you are and there's guards and there's dogs and there's towers with lights and there's barbed wire. And there's a strange smell in the air. So it's very frightening to begin with. Um, a lot of people, what uh -huh. would qualify people? Oh. Go ahead. Oh, um, what would qualify people to be gas? Like, why did they only like choose some people? To, like, be gas? So they only took the people who they thought were healthy enough that they could work for them. Everyone else didn't have a purpose to the Nazis. So they would be the ones who would be gas. Mm -hmm. Did you just like look around in your mind and see like, um, a lot of people, a lot of people, when they, they remember this, a lot of the survivors will talk about how they noticed that like the old people, <laughs> and the children were generally put in one, one um, spot and some of the women, and then everyone else was put into a different line. So they knew that there was some reason they're separating them, but they didn't know why. Um, be gassed? Say it again. Who, they would gas the children? Yes. A lot of the children were gassed if they didn't think that they um, they could do work. Wasn't this, this reminds me of the boy in striped pajamas, like that movie. Yeah, that's based yeah. off the Holocaust. It is? Uh, I, oh, it is. Yeah, so a lot of people talk about her survivors. This is the last time they saw their family alive. Yeah. Okay, so this would be a really heart-wrenching moment. This would be a um, very traumatic moment for a survivor. So if, if you were chosen to be gassed, they obviously wouldn't be like, hey, good job, you get chosen to be gassed. They wouldn't tell you that. So what they would do is they would say, okay, we want you to come into this room and we're going to have you undress, take off all your clothes. We need to make sure that you guys stay clean. So take off all your clothes, put them in this pile, take off your shoes, put them in this pile. Are you wearing jewelry? Oh, you know, we want to keep your jewelry clean, put that in this pile. Um, and then we're going to uh, shave your head because we don't want you to get lice. You know, hair has lice in it, so we're going to shave all your hair off. And then you're going to go take a shower. And they would send you to a room that looked like this. This is the shower chamber. Um, and then they would close the door. And as they did that, the shower heads at the top would have um, what was called sarin, ga sarin gas, I think. Um, and they would put the, the, the little pellets, and the pellets would react with the air, and that would be what would gas when they would die. So, um, so really, really bad. Would it, yes. Wouldn't it have hurt the people when they got gassed or would it have just been like quick? Um, I think it was a pretty quick experience. 
Um, because remember, the whole purpose of Auschwitz and the final solution is to kill people as quickly as possible. So they would want it to be as fast as possible, get those bodies out, um, and then they would uh, have the next set of people go in. Think of this as like a people murdering factory is what this is. This Ballard, mm -hmm. this kind of reminds me, um, two things, this reminds me of two things. One, this reminds me of um, the hiding place, mm -hmm. like about how like, it's kind of embarrassing about how like they had, to, they made them like take all of their clothes off and stuff. Mm -hmm. but it was actually a shower. It wasn't like a mm -hmm. thing though. Yeah. But, like, they were like really disgusting though. Mm-hmm. And they didn't like clean them at all. And it was like slimy and stuff. Yeah. So imagine, okay, this is not, even if you survive, even if they just give you a shower with disinfectant, um, it's a very humiliating experience. I would not be happy if they made me shave my head. And then um, you would see all of your, your, your buddies naked. Okay. So that was very humiliating to people. Um, especially if it's like an older woman or an older man, like, I don't know. It's just a really bad um, experience. And the whole purpose is to remove people's dignity and humanity. Okay, so I'm going to move on. So this is pictures of the stuff the Nazis took off the Jewish people who went to the concentration camps. Can you guys see what this is pictures of right here? It's the same thing. Is it shoes? It's shoes. Yeah. These are all piled mountains of shoes that they took off of these people that they gassed. Are those like, would they give them those shoes or would they like? No, these are the shoes they came in. So like oh. when they left for the concentration camp, these are the shoes they were wearing. Um, so a lot of these are um, like when you go to the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C., they will show you rooms of shoes and it's just like a small fraction of the shoes the Nazis collected. Why would they take their clothes off in the first place? Like, why wouldn't they just... Ah, because the Nazis, it's a great question. The Nazis could use anything that the Jews brought. So they would resell their shoes. Um, These are all rings, like wedding rings. Oh, my God. So they would sell these. They would melt them down or resell them. Would they only, like, take their shoes? Or, like, <gasps> would they... That's hair. That's hair. Oh, yeah. that's would so they, like, take their shoes and only keep their shoes, but... Or, like, would they uh, keep their clothes, too? They, they used the clothes, too. So the shoes, they might have used the leather from them. A lot of shoes were leather back then. Um, they could have resold some of the stuff. The hair they would use, um, they used it to stuff, like, put stuff like cushions and stuff. Or, like, um, I think you use it. I can't remember what they used it for. But it, it's buoyant. Ooh, it to, like, use it like, and stuff. They would actually, like, put that in, like, pillows and cushions? Yeah. So hair, even though, their, even though their hair was like disgusting. Well, this was. I, I mean, they could walk it once you once you've had it out. They could probably like disinfect it once you. have Okay. Yeah. Like, off people, yeah. Um, and then they would tattoo a number on your arm. So if you have gone through a death camp, um, the Germans would tattoo a number, and you were not given a name. You were given a number. Um, and survivors still have these today. Miss Ballard. Uh huh. Go ahead. What would they do with all the bodies? That's a great question, Kit. So I think uh, we'll see it with a video I'm going to show you. They would burn them. And that was what was really upsetting, I think, to a lot of the Jews at Auschwitz who survived. A lot of them were forced to take the bodies out of the gas chambers once the gas was done and put them in the ovens to burn them. And I just can't even imagine how traumatic that would be. But they, the Nazis, A, they wanted it to be very efficient and burning trash or people is very efficient. Um, and B, they didn't want to have any evidence that this ever happened. They made the Jews do that? Like they made the Jews go in there and take them? Yep. So like the Jews could like take one of their, like their dad or something and go burn them in a thing? Potentially, yeah. <sighs> Wait, um, what? What is how how long does it take for the gas chamber to like make you die? <laughs> uh, my guess is it's less than it's probably like less than ten minutes. It's not very long because it's all sealed up, not a very big place. 
So once you breathed it in enough, you would pass would, out and die. Would they just like put you in a room and put gas in it? Yeah, so it would be a sealed in room and they would close all the entrances and there'd be no ventilation and then they would put the gas in it. Oh, that's bad. It is really bad. Um, so Hitler, when you go to Prague, um, you can see a lot of beautiful synagogues. It's one of the only places in Europe that you have these intact synagogues and intact Jewish communities um, because Hitler was going to develop Prague, the city, as a museum for the extinct Jewish race. So um, he was going to have people go there like a tourist attraction to be like, oh, and then there were these people that were called the Jews, but we got rid of them all because they weren't good people. But you can come see their ancient race. So kind of like going to see something in ancient Egypt where there's like the ancient Egyptians aren't here anymore. Um, so if, if you go to the Czech Republic, um, you can see these beautiful synagogues and then they have these this famous graveyard um, where they had, it's one of the oldest Jewish graveyards in the world. Miss Ballard, my parents, went, when they went to, um, they said that their favorite trip ever was to Prague, and they said that they went to some of the synagogues, and they said they were beautiful. Oh, that's awesome. Well, maybe they can show you some pictures. I really loved going there. It was really cool. Miss Ballard, my sister mm -hmm. ha still has a fake diary about that. Does she really? <laughs> yeah. So cool. Um, so... Yeah. If you guys have time over the summer, um, you might enjoy reading or like reading snippets of the diary that Anne Frank wrote. So she was about your age, but I think she was 13, um, around 13 when she went into hiding. Um, so her family was German and they fled to Holland when it got really bad in Germany. And they had a secret, like a whole half of a secret house. Um, it was in the back of this, this built the building and her family lived there for several years um so she wrote a diary of living in it so think about like you guys are stuck in quarantine we've been in quarantine for like a month and you can go outside and you can call your friends and um you can look out the window she couldn't even look out the window she couldn't go outside she couldn't communicate with anyone outside of the house um so she has a really interesting story what How did they get food? Uh, okay. so for food, they would, um, they had somebody who, you had to have somebody who would help you in a situation like this. So, um, they had a family friend, I think who would, um, go out and she would buy food on the black market. So it was like buying food illegally so she could buy enough food for the family. Wasn't there like a safe place that they talked about or something? Um, I'm not sure. I know that it was in the back of her, her, where she lived was like hidden behind this yeah. little house. Um, but I think it would be really sad to have to live like that for years. Yeah. So eventually somebody figured out that they were living there and betrayed them. And, um, at the end, she and all of her family die except for her father. So you can go to see her house in Holland. I went and saw it. Um, and at the end of it, there's this really moving video where her father is talking about why it's so important we remember the Holocaust so this never happens again. Wait, did she die too? When she died, happened? yeah. She died. Uh, uh, she wasn't at Auschwitz. I think she was at Bergen-Belsen. But it was, I think she died of like pneumonia or something. It was, she died oh. of Oh, so she died. She didn't die when like the family betrayed them? No, when but she went, them? was betrayed and they sent her to a concentration camp. I was think. it just her? And her parents, or did she have any? She had a sister, I think. And then there were some other Jews who were living there with them. I think there were like six or seven people there. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. She had like, um, so there was like her, mm -hmm. her I think her name was like something that started with an M. Mm -hmm. um, and there was this, the Von Dons, um, mm -hmm. this other guy, another guy, um, the, bon the Von Dons. Um, son, who she eventually fell in love with, and then her dad was like, "No." no. <laughs> yeah. and, then, um, and I think they had like a servant person or something. It wasn't like their servant; it was like a person who would go out and get stuff for them. Yeah, I so, have like, an old copy of it. I'm pretty sure it was like my mom's. I don't know, but it's like it's like it's really old because it has like yellow pages. So uh -huh. I don't know how old it is, but. Did you like it, Audrey? Mm-hmm. 
Good. Yeah. Um, so that's a that's something you guys can either read or I think there's some movies on it too. Okay, so um, Nazis also would steal a lot of the stuff that people who were Jewish had in their house. And this is a famous painting called The Woman in Gold. And if you go to New York, you can go see it now. But it belonged to a, a Jewish family in Austria. And um, after the war, uh, I think one or two members of the family survived the Holocaust and they came back and they wanted their house and they wanted their painting. And the Austrian government said, nope, this is now the property of Austria. You cannot have it back. So it went into court, into international court. <laughs> it went into international court. And the, the point is, is that even today, it's still hard for people who survived the Holocaust to get back the things that were stolen by the Nazis. Should we write this? No, you don't need to write that. Okay. Uh, so you can go see it. And the painting was not returned to the family till 2006. And they sold it uh, to an art gallery in New York that you can go see it now. Okay. We're going to watch a quick video. Hello. And this is actually really interesting because it shows you the the camps, like what they look like today. Miss Ballard, when are we going to learn about Pearl Harbor? Um, next week or the following week. Okay. So let's take. We're going through World War II really slowly because I only have like one or two days a week to do it with you. So we're just spreading it out. All right, everybody, right? Facts and posters illustrate the Nazi notion of a master race. Anyone who didn't fit into their model could be viewed as an enemy of the state and sent to concentration camps. The Nazis required those they imprisoned to wear badges that identified their status political traitor, lawbreaker, foreigner, homosexual, and a catch-all, asocial, anyone who would not conform. A special badge, the Yellow Star of David, went to Hitler's lowest of the low, the Jews. The Nazis believed that the German people were the master race, the toughest, the strongest, the bravest, the smartest. Yeah. They said we should be running the planet, we just can't do it because this conspiracy, the Jewish world conspiracy is in the way. And without them, if we deal with that conspiracy, then we will achieve our rightful status again. The Nazis started putting their anti-Semitic ideas into action as early as April of 1933, when they organized a boycott of Jewish businesses. He specifically blamed one group, the Jewish people, for ruining things for everybody else. For him, it was clear his scapegoat was the Jews. They were the source of all evil in Germany and in the world, and he wanted to kind of get rid of that evil, and that's what he worked for. Then, in November of 1938, the Nazis led a pogrom against Jews throughout Germany. During Kristallnacht, or the Night of the Broken Glass, as it was called, Jewish homes, hospitals, and schools were ransacked. 7,000 Jewish businesses were damaged or destroyed, and over a 1,000 synagogues were burned, and 30,000 Jews were arrested and put in concentration camps. This was a turning point from earlier economic, political, and social persecution to physical beatings, incarceration, and even murder. It was the beginning of Hitler's final solution. Today, Berlin's topography of terror exhibit stands on the rubble of what was once the most feared address in Berlin, the headquarters of the Gestapo secret police and the elite SS force. It was from here that government employees managed the Nazi state and dispassionately coordinated its most ruthless activities. The efficient and heartless bureaucracy behind Hitler's crimes gave rise to the expression, the banality of evil. The evils of fascism were incremental. As its small evils became big evils, German society managed to be oblivious to its own atrocities. At first, concentration camps contained people who didn't conform. Then they became forced labor camps. Eventually, the Nazis built death camps, which were located outside of Germany and therefore farther from public view. With what the Nazis called the final solution, the entire Jewish population was targeted for extermination. In total, approximately 6 million Jews died from Nazi persecution, 
2.7 million of those died in death camps. Auschwitz-Birkenau in Poland was the biggest and most notorious concentration camp in the Nazi system. Seeing the camp can be difficult, but Auschwitz survivors want tourists to come here to try to appreciate the scale and the monstrosity of the place in human terms in hopes that this horror, known as the Holocaust, will never be forgotten. As they entered these work camps, prisoners were greeted with a sign over the entrance. Arbeit macht frei. Work makes you free. A cynical lie. Once inside, inmates were either worked to death or executed. New arrivals were sorted into two categories. Those who would be sent to the gas chambers immediately and those who could work would live at least a little longer. Halls are lined with photographs of victims, each marked with dates of arrival and dates of death. Inmates rarely survived more than a couple of months. Up to a thousand people, each tattoo <coughs> with an ID number, were packed into each of these buildings. The gas chambers, where the mass killing was done, were disguised as showers. People were given hooks to hang their clothes on, conned into thinking they were coming back. The Nazis didn't want to panic. Then the inmates piled into the shower room. In this facility, the Nazis gassed and cremated over 4,000 people per day. Okay. So that is what it looks like today. Um, and uh, actually, in Ger so Be Auschwitz is in Poland, but in Germany, it's required for school children to all go to a concentration camp before they graduate from high school. And the German government thinks it's really important that people learn about the Holocaust now um, because they never want it to happen again. So the Holocaust didn't really end until um, the war ended and the camps were, were liberated by either the Americans or the Russians. Um, and when the Americans came to some of the camps, the soldiers um, were really appalled by what they saw. And at one point, General Eisenhower, who was in charge of the of the um, American soldiers, he got all of the townspeople in the town nearby. And he said, you have to come and see what's going on in this camp that's right next to your town and that you allowed this. Um, so I feel like the Germans are really sorry that this happened now. And now the Germans are probably one of the societies that's most interested in helping people so that this never happens again. Okay, so that was super duper depressing. Um, but I think it's an important story to tell, especially since we're not going to the Holocaust Museum um, in St. Louis this year, but I recommend going to the one in Washington DC if you get a chance at some point. I think this is really important that we learn about this so it never happens again. Are there any questions? Okay, so, yes, Audrey. I don't think I've been to the Holocaust Museum, but I have been to a few museums in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. I've been to the um, the Museum of Natural History. Mm -hmm. and I think there might have been, like, a few exhibits on that, but I think it was mostly animals. Yeah, it, the Holocaust Museum, is it's a, it's a separate museum. It's not part of the Smithsonian Museums. Yeah, I don't um, think I only went to the Smithsonian, I think. Okay. Um, 